and welcome back to Code Vein, actually in the full release. So I played the demo, and the demo actually was a bit of the first part of the game, and I don't even think I finished that entire area. I basically just got to the point where you unlock the home base and then stopped. But I wanted to do this video sort of as a follow-up, and I wanted to do more of these videos where I'm following up on games, games that I did first impressions on or did a demo of, of after I, if I do end up trying out the full release. So, because there are some assumptions I made in that demo that I've learned and now that the full game is released and I've been playing it quite a bit. I played it all yesterday or day over the weekend. So, I wanted to start here specifically with the character customization. One, it allows you to do this anytime. That was something that was in the demo. demo that is still a fact of you can go back and edit your character, add accessories, remove accessories, change clothing. I have this outfit on. Ah, back up. This is not the original outfit. This is the original outfit. So I've changed both the color and I realized only after the fact of, hey, you can go in here and just remove pieces and get it down to sort of up base level, which is so much better because there are accessories in here like gloves that I want these gloves. I don't want the gloves that are already on the outfit, so I switched it to, to take them off. I just want to show that part off real quick, and as I mentioned this, I want to do these follow-ups, and these are probably, this video is probably going to be edited down a little bit, so we're back in the home base. This is where I ended that demo on, and I've done a fair bit, so exploration works very much like Dark Souls in that you teleport like this screen reminds me more of DS2 and I'll just go to an area that I've kind of been already in. Let's just start here. So this is right after this is the area right after the parking garage where you fight the boss, the first boss of the game, Oliver. And one assumption I did have after facing Oliver was that the crystal that was left behind would be something every boss would leave. And you would then gain memories of every boss that you found. Not true. And it was actually one of the more disappointing factors, at least in terms of bosses because I thought that would be very interesting to run into a boss. They're this weird creature. How did they get that way? A defeat the boss, pick up the crystal, and see what happened to them in some light and gain some insight into them um, after the fact. But they are not completely gone. They're still very much part of the game where there can be crystals that you find and they're fragments usually and you pick them up and you find details about characters and details about the world or through learning about those characters and not just the characters that you've met but characters or that you haven't met so there are characters of there are crystals that relate to Yakumo's past and Yakumo has been my favorite to bring along just because he is a heavy hitter. Yeah, he took care of that him basically himself. He is very useful to have around because he hits like a truck that I'm not usually worried. And usually when it comes to Souls games, I am always of the mindset of kill them fast and you don't have to worry about anything. It's really all it is, so... One thing I haven't gotten used to in the combat is I feel like at some points that I'm not in range and then I end up being in range 
of some of their hits, and it's just some of the most annoying things. Of, I dodged it. Apparently, I didn't. And that's really important because enemies hit hard. I mean, I'm not taking a whole lot here, and that's mostly just due to the fact that I am level 43. And this is the starting area. Or, er, actually, I'm getting close to the next checkpoint. Which, some are kind of close together, but I usually find them far enough apart that they're showing up exactly when I feel like I need them. Because some checkpoints, I know in Dark Souls 3 for sure, were right on top of each other. These are spaced a little far enough apart that you're getting through some areas, and this is just to make it easier so you don't have to go through more than you need to. Also, figured out the run button, which is one thing I couldn't figure out in the previous, was how the hell do I run? And it's holding down square, which is another slightly annoying factor. The controls are kind of my bigger gripe with this game. Oh. You've layered things and made it so... I think slightly overly complicated of there's a separate button to do this. Like, run could be hold down dodge. Because if I press dodge, it stops. Like, it's only... Even holding down circle means nothing. So, I don't understand why... Unlike Dark Souls, Souls, that I have to press down square. Which, when I press square, it does nothing. There is nothing to be done with square. Unless I hold down R2 and hit square. Which is similar for a circle. I can hold down R2 and hit circle to heal my AI help. So I don't understand why they need the additional button press. Locking on is sometimes not great because I'm trying to move the camera and I end up switching. And that only becomes an issue when there's a large group all on top of me. And I'm trying to stay locked onto one and but still have a view of the other ones, and that's what ends up usually doing me. In terms of exploration, it's fairly good. I do know that there was one point where the story said, go to this statue. And I didn't remember the story telling me that. And I ended up running around trying to look for it. You can go to the map in the home base, which actually... Let me actually go back there and actually show you, you what I'm talking about. Because there's not too much more here. Now, since we're back at home base, yes, here's what is helpful. You don't know where to go? Investigate the cathedral. This tells you where to go. Granted, when it said this, it only said go check out the goddess statue. And the only reason I somewhat knew where the goddess statue was, because it's off the beaten path, path in the way to get to another boss, I would not have found that had I not been exploring. So there is some level of exploration of you need to find it. If you don't know where it is, go to where you haven't been. Here's another area. And this is the hot spring. And I love the hot spring for one main reason, and it's not going to really proc here because I haven't died, but here it, is. it will tell you. The special effects of the hot spring allows you to claim half your lost haze. So if you die, in a scenario you probably feel like you're going to struggle to get back to, unable to get back to, or aren't ready to get back to, but maybe you need the haze, or it's so much or so little that it doesn't you don't feel it will affect, um, then you can go ahead and rest here, get back- Oh, I had lost haze! I did not know that. I did not think I did. But now I have 17,000. So. And you can go 
look at the lost hands. And you can also look at previous cutscenes. So any of the previous cutscenes, and also look at the different terminology that they use. The Great Collapse, Thorns of Judgment, Bloodthirst, Blood Springs. Because there's a lot of just proper nouns, on tops of proper nouns, used in these. But that is such... That to me is one of the more helpful items. And it's not even an item, it's an unlimited use. Just go here, rest, get your stuff. Or get half of it even. Which is just so nice. Um, now let's go into another area. Okay, welcome to the Howling Pit. So, oh, that is one thing. After you've basically cleared out an area. Other other characters in the world will show up. Other NPCs. Hurry up and come out. It's dark. There's too many lost in here. Scared. If my wife knew I was out here. But he's in the same boat as me. We both got the I'll do whatever it takes to make it back home by Okay, that sort of just sent me a marker of where to find his friend. So I'm going to see if I can get to him. But you can see from here that this is not easy. It's hard to see. Monsters are all around. And these fly swamp guys are not easy. And now I'm also in deeper water. Oh wait, no, this just. Oh wait, no, this is him. Looks like there's some high ground here. There's special enemy there. That is probably either blocking his path of that guy's friend or eating him. My bed is eating him. Yep. Dog tagged with ring. Yeah, I think he's gone. Okay. Yeah, I know. There are guys there. But it is one thing about your AI partner. He, they, whoever you happen to be bringing along will tell you. You and talk to you. And I've mostly been able to kind of ignore it. It might be more irritating to some other people. You're going to end up getting killed trying to find those blood beads, aren't you? Oh, God. Okay. But one thing that does make exploring... This area, I have the complete map. So, it is not too bad. But, as you can see, there's a little trail everywhere I go. And that's basically just helping... To know where you've already been. And it's one of the better parts about exploring, especially when you don't have a full map. Because, hey, I'm trying to find how to progress. I've already been over this area. Like, I've already been back this way. Because I still see all the dots. It's like, I know up there I've already been. So maybe what I need to do is go over here. It is super helpful in just trying to find where you need to go. And even then, I still ended up going in circles a little bit because I didn't see a ledge that I needed to drop down into. And because I didn't see the ledge, I didn't see where I had to go. And let me show a little bit of my most recent nightmare. Okay. Let's 
gating room is my last checkpoint. So let me see if I can do a boss run. Because that's what I'm in the middle of. I'm trying to get past this one boss. So let's close it out on me going crazy. And it is a run that I do not feel is at all viable for just, hey, let me just book it. And that's one thing, I think that's one thing why I didn't really realize there was a run of, I don't feel like just running from enemies is very viable. Partly because, especially in this area, they do that crap. And basically end up on top of me anyway. So, why bother? But, goal right now is to avoid getting as much damage as possible. Which actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to re-rest and heal. Hmm. I can make my life easier, but I'm not. Okay. Which one? Okay, no. It's not that one. See, the boss is technically right through there. And if I wanted to, I could run into that room. And there's one enemy there. Except for there's not. There's another one up there. Which makes it an issue. So, in order to make the run slightly easier and to get less damage on the way, I'm doing this. Which is going up here. Dropping down here. Dropping... Oh no. Ladder up here. Going across here. And f trying to fight this one on this ledge rather than down below. Where I could more than likely get double teamed by the two of them. So. So I'm going to try to do slow. So I can get a back attack in. And got it. And did the full cinematic this time. I've gotten a few of them, but it hasn't done the full cinematic. Stop hitting me with your shield. Ugh, thank god. Okay. So damage wise, not looking great. You know what? Let's use... I'm not sure how much this heals, so I actually want to test it. Use one. That did not... Regen doesn't work like I think it should. Okay, that's just extra healing that doesn't recover. So I personally found that I like using slow. He doesn't take venom for this one. So. And bosses can be backstabbed. That is important to know. It's also better to roll into a boss so you can potentially get another one. This is going very well in compared to some of my other ones. Hopefully this works, because I've been running this boss for longer than I like. How am I getting so many of these? Heal, heal, a little lower than I like. I have no idea how I'm getting so many of these because I normally get maybe one in this fight. Oh, that backswing is just killer. Yakumo, heal me! Heal me! Damn it, Yakumo! That would have won it! 
I am so pissed. I got so many hits in that one. Yakimo, huh? you had the health. Why didn't you kill me? We're doing that again. Okay. Good. Also, these backstab give Icor. So if you're my base, depending on my blood code, right now it's 30. But since I've gotten a couple backstabs in, I've gotten up to 34. Which just gives me extra Icor and magic to use to eventually do slow or to throw fireballs at this guy. And I am rolling around. Aiming for the back. Feel like that's the best way to deal with them. One thing I realized I wasn't doing was letting my stamina regen quite as much. Yakumo, do your heal. Da! Heal. We're doing okay. Oh, you got a backstab. Perfect. <sighs> Die. Oh my god, is this one actually gonna do it? <sighs> I've run that boss one too many times and I like to admit. So, as you can see, no vestige left behind for me. Oh, wait, there might be one here. There's one here. A special vestige that will teleport. You will be teleported to a different area? Okay, I've not seen that before. Can I just go down here real quick? Okay, good. There's a checkpoint here. And more map. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little bit of exploring because I haven't been past this yet. This entire area remind. Ooh, God, no. Don't run too far ahead. Yeah, not happy about that. Okay. But that is basically code vein. And it is been a lot of fun it is anime souls is the most apt description of it the story is very told and uh, so you won't be questioning much of anything but if you can make sense of all the things that they're saying is very hard to tell well, it takes a while i don't think i fully started to grasp it until i started viewing the memories and seeing people in the actual situations so Thank you for watching this little follow-up, and if you're interested in Code Vein, I definitely do recommend it if you like the Soul style, and actually it's kind of easier than Soul, well, if that even makes sense. It's a lot of information dump at the start, so it can be off-putting, but if you can get past that, then it starts to get a decent flow to it, but whereas... Souls games are usually just dump you in and tell you nothing. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!